It's been over six months since Starship lifted off for the very first time, in a problematic debut that has kept the rocket grounded since then. But now we have much more glimmers of hope for a return as soon as next week. Besides a big announcement last weekend, SpaceX is now going one step further, ordering new road closures posted for next week that line up with potential launch dates and launch windows. The reasoning behind these road closures is of the non-flight testing nature, but that could be amended once a launch license is received. That goes to show you that these are not your normal closure times. Let's go! However, if you're planning on making a trip and staying for a couple of days, you should take more time to consider this before reserving a room in the nearby areas for the significant historical event. For instance, the FAA completed its safety review of Starship last week, but the administration is still waiting on the conclusion of an environmental review by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that has to be done before it can grant SpaceX its launch license. The review began on October 19th in collaboration with the FAA to look into the potential environmental impacts and threats to endangered species in the sensitive Boca Chica region as a consequence of recent upgrades at SpaceX's South Texas Starbase facility, particularly the newly installed water deluge system. At the time, it was stated that the assessment would take anywhere from 30 to 135 days to complete, which in layman's terms, between one to three months. The USFWS says it's likely, it likely won't need the entire duration to perform the review, but assuming an earliest case scenario of 30 days, that still takes us to November 18th. Consequently, a November 13th launch date doesn't seem entirely realistic, except for nothing less than a miracle. In the end, SpaceX's path to conquering Mars from Starbase continues to prove itself a treacherous one. But at this point, we're all pretty much considering that Starship might end up launching from Florida, right? There is good news that a crew access arm was lifted into place at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral on Monday. This would circumvent NASA's concerns that the Starship rocket from Florida would put nearby critical infrastructure that are designed to launch to the International Space Station at risk. In 2021, SpaceX accelerated the construction of an orbital Starship launch pad at its facilities in Cape Canaveral, Florida, as an alternative to the rocket's primary test launch and development site in Boca Chica, Texas, which has been subject to a lengthy regulatory review set to conclude next week. But at that point, one of SpaceX's existing Florida facilities, called Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on the coast of Cape Canaveral, is the only pad approved to launch the company's Crew Dragon capsule. NASA depends on that spacecraft to ferry its astronauts to the International Space Station. In order to solve this problem, over the course of 2023 so far, SpaceX has been working to change that with the construction of a new crew and cargo access tower at its second Florida launch pad, Space Launch Complex 40, or SLC-40, at the CCSFS. Does that stand for Cape Canaveral Space Force Station? Or should it be Space Force Base? Let me know in the comments down below. On Monday, construction crews began hoisting the crew access arm into place using a series of cranes and harnesses. This is one of the last major components that need to be in place, in addition to the emergency egress system, a zipline-like escape system that would allow astronauts and support personnel to quickly get away from the tower if needed. In previous press conferences with NASA and SpaceX officials, it was said that the tower should be finished with construction by the end of 2023. This milestone not only addresses NASA's concerns, but also promotes SpaceX's dense flight schedule in the near future. According to Space Flight Now, Axiom Space's third private astronaut mission to the International Space Station will likely mark the debut of the new tower, thanks to a packed schedule at Launch Complex 39A. 
The mission, commanded by former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria, will send three European astronauts on a trip to the space station for up to 14 days. If the tower isn't ready in time to support that mission, Axe 3 could still launch from LC-39A, much like all other SpaceX-flown astronaut missions have since 2020. However, that would cause much more congestion on an already packed schedule for the pad. One of the key reasons why Axe 3 might be the mission that would debut the tower capabilities at the SLC-40 is a pair of launches scheduled within days of each other that require the currently unique capabilities of the LC-39A. A Falcon 9 rocket will be used to launch the first commercial lunar payload services mission from Intuitive Machines no earlier than January 12th of next year. The Nova C lander flying to the moon's south pole must be fueled at the launch pad using equipment only available at 39A. Those launches are boxed in on either side by other high-priority missions. Starting November 9th, a Falcon 9 is scheduled to launch the 29th SpaceX Commercial Resupply Services mission, or CRS-29, which will send thousands of pounds of cargo and science experiments up to the crew in orbit. That is expected to be followed by the fifth and final Falcon Heavy of 2023, the USS F-52 National Security Mission, which will take about three weeks to convert the launch pad from a Falcon 9 to a heavy configuration. On the other side of Axe 3's roughly two-week mission, the SpaceX Crew-8 Quartet is expected to launch no earlier than mid-February. Commander and NASA astronaut Matthew Dominic will lead the mission alongside pilot Michael Barrett, Mission Specialist Jeanette Epps, and Mission Specialist Alexander Grabenkin. Houston-based Axiom Space was planning to see its third commercial flight to the space station fly from Pad 39A within a few days of the IM-1 launch, and NASA wants it to go on schedule to avoid disrupting a busy space station traffic plan in early 2024. The IM-1 mission, which only has one short launch window a month, could face long delays if it gets bumped out of its January window. Having the option to launch Axe 3 from SLC-40 would allow SpaceX to meet all of their customers' needs and accommodate more opportunities in smaller time frame. That, of course, relies upon the crew and cargo access tower being ready in time. While the plan right now is for Axe 3 to use SLC-40 and IM-1 to use the LC-39A pad, it all depends on the tower's readiness, as I've said before. Even if the new tower doesn't get the clearance for use supporting Axe 3 in time for that mission, with increasing requests to launch more to the ISS and commercial space stations after that, it'll certainly be a valuable asset for SpaceX and its customers heading into 2024 and beyond. In another interesting piece of news, the European Space Agency, or ESA, announced on November 6th that it will start a competition to develop commercial vehicles to transport cargo to and from the International Space Station by 2028, which is a step towards developing a crewed vehicle. ESA's member states, meeting in Seville, Spain, as part of the European Space Summit, endorsed a resolution directing the agency to take the first step in an effort patterned on NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services, or COTS, or COTS, program that would see European companies developing vehicles for cargo transport to the ISS and potentially future space stations. I'm asking for a small but very impactful step, the first step that enables a much bigger ambition. Joseph Oshbacher, ESA Director General, said in remarks at the opening of the ESA Council meeting there, I propose a competition between innovative European companies to deliver a space cargo return service to transport cargo to the International Space Station by 2028 and bring it back to Earth. Details about the competition have yet to be worked out. Oshbacher said at a media briefing after the ESA Council meeting that he will establish a small tiger team within the agency to start the program. He envisioned a first phase where ESA provided study contracts to two or three companies in the near term with a total value of 75 million euros or 80 million US using existing funding. Funding for later phases of the program would be allocated be allocated by ESA member states at the next triennial ministerial meeting in 2025 known as CM25. 
He did not disclose what he estimated the cost of the program might be. While ESA officials did not explicitly state it, the effort is clearly inspired by NASA's COTS program, which offered funding to companies to support the development of cargo capabilities. When then-NASA Administrator Mike Griffin announced the COTS program in 2005, the agency envisioned spending half a billion US dollars on the effort. NASA provided additional funding later in the program, which resulted in SpaceX's Cargo Dragon reaching the ISS in 2012 and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo spacecraft in 2013. The 75 million euros for the first phase of the cargo program will come from money already allocated to ESA's European Exploration Envelope Program. The funding will be exempt from ESA's geographic return policies that require member states to receive funding in proportion to what they provide ESA, but the use of that policy for later phases of the program will have to be negotiated. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go on ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through the link provided in the description below. Sign up today and you'll get access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Either way, we appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.